In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to simply digitize a couple portraits designed like this one. Welcome back, Legacy Family, and if it's your first time here, hi, my name is Ken, and I teach you all about digitizing and embroidery. The app that we'll be using today is called Design Doodler, and if you're struggling with getting started on digitizing, you've been embroidering a little bit, and you're just having trouble with creating your own designs, the Design Doodler is meant for people who wanna just get super creative because of its super simple interface. So if you guys are interested in checking out this app after the end of the video, I'll I'll leave the link in the description. This is what the design doodler looks like. Like I said, it's pretty simple. It's really, really easy. We have some tools on the left side, at the bottom, and on the right. As we go with the video, we'll check those out. And if you want to see a full walkthrough of this program, then click this link up above because John Deere goes throughout the whole program way better than I do. <laughs> so I'm going to import one of the images and I'm simply going to click on photo library. Now I'm going to import this one right here. And this is a photo of Amanda and I. If you don't know Amanda, she's my partner. We've been together for over four years now and this photo we took when we were a couple months dating uh, at a waterfall in Montreal. So I thought it's really cool. I really like it. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite photos of us together. So why not share how to digitize something like this using this photo? All right. So you can see that what I did just now is I clicked on this select tool right here because that allows me to select the image. And what you can do is press up by resizing it to resize that. And if you go under these settings right here, I can change the opacity down to almost that. Now, I also clicked here and this is showing me the hoop size. I want it to be four by four, but if you want a different hoop size, you simply click at the bottom, you go under settings and on general, you switch to hoops and you can click whatever one you want. So if you have a five by seven, then you would click for that one. So I'm just gonna stick to the four by four hoop because I have the mighty hoop that's around this size. So you can resize size it's super super simple something like that works best so I don't need to edit it anymore but again you can change the opacity I love that about this app because it makes it so much easier for you to work and then like I said you click here if you want to import any photo awesome I'm gonna click there again to deselect it and right here I have the zoom tool so if I click on that I can zoom in a little bit and now I'm gonna switch back to the tools we're gonna be utilizing some pretty cool tools and this is going to be this one right here which could be called a steel or a satin depending on what program for digitizing you use and what it does is it basically creates a uh, zigzag stitches so it goes around let me show you just really quickly on her foot <laughs> i'm going to zoom in right here you can see that it's doing a pretty simple zigzag where it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And that looks really, really cool. These are the kind of stitches that are used for when you wanna do borders or when you wanna just do like highlights and stuff like that. Shapes that aren't crazy big. And usually the limit for these is between one, uh, one millimeter and 10 millimeters. You don't wanna go too big or too small because then it just doesn't look that great on embroidery. On the left here, you have the redo. So I'm just gonna redo that. And over here, I think this is the spacing. So this is the spacing between each stitch. Yep, that makes sense. I think I wanna keep it maybe around this one. And this is the size. So I'm probably gonna choose this one right here. Let's see what that looks like. If it's a little too big again, let's go maybe for the smaller one. Let's see that one. Oh, that one actually looks really nice. We might actually be doing this one right here. And if you see, I'm actually using one of these like hand gloves, finger gloves. And it's just so that like whenever you're editing on your iPad, which by the way, this program is on the iPad as well as on PC. I like to use this so like it no longer like detects my whatever part of this hand is <laughs> as it used to be for. Okay, so that's the tools that we're going to use. If you press one to one, one, it'll show again the whole screen and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit all right if you press the hand you can move around and if you use the ruler you can see how long is my leg 25 millimeters that's pretty small <laughs> so I'm going to just go around like that and again the tool that we're going to be using is going to be this one I can't really see officially what it's called but it's pretty much the satin tool select that and let's get started by doing the foot right here now, I'm not gonna go too crazy in detail because again, I like these types of uh, portraits to be a little more simple rather than like those complex looking ones. And I'm sure you guys at this point, you have seen them all over Instagram and Etsy. These, these kind of portraits 
are everywhere. And what I love about the Design Doodler is how easy it makes it. So like if you guys have like some custom shop that you guys like sell these at, or if you wanna just do like, for example, Christmas is coming soon, or you have someone's wedding. I mean, this is super simple to create. You can see I've already finished that part of the short. Let me move around. I'm going to go back to, what should I do? Should I do the leg? I guess I'll do the leg, okay. This is something that I'm talking about now, and this is what we're gonna do later, which is called branching. So you can see that I finished over here, and I mean, I can try and find a way to keep going, but instead, I'm just gonna finish the foot. And then we're gonna do the branching afterwards, which means that the whole program will automatically connect all of these shapes. That way, we don't have to do anything manually, and it becomes super simple. I'm just gonna finish this leg. Super straight leg for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna give myself a little more of a calf, okay? <laughs> because I can. <laughs> yeah, I can dream a little bit, all right, guys? Um, okay, let's keep going. I'm gonna finish this part of the shorts. Like I said, I'm just trying to keep it simple, 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 not too much. And I'm actually gonna press one to one. Right at the top right here, you can see you can enable the 3D and that's what it looks like. I can actually click the eye to disable the photo. You can see we're already taking shape of the whole design, which is really, really cool. Unfortunately, the iPad isn't strong enough, so it does lag a little bit when we use the 3D. So I'm just gonna disable that so it doesn't lag that much. Okay, let's take care of the next shoe right here. And I'm gonna zoom in just so that it's easier for me to go around it, but at the same time, I'm not trying to go too crazy with it. That's pretty good. Move over here. I'm going to create this part and I'm going to create this part of the leg like so. Awesome. Then I'm going to kind of create my hand but also keep it simple. Like I've always struggled when it comes to doing hands for these. I just don't really know how to do it. So <laughs> I guess, uh, what do we do here? Let's see. We can either do it super simple or we can try to do this. Those, those fingers are too chunky. So what I'm gonna do is just leave it as if it was like a Muppet hand. I think it looks pretty cool that way anyways. Uh, and let's keep going. We're gonna create this and create this part. Let's go around this area. Awesome, like this, oh. The shorts go all the way back here and we can finish the shorts right there. Awesome. Let's keep going this way. And again, I'm just trying to like fill all those little parts. Oh, wow. That hand, that hand is looking, <laughs> I cannot do the whole finger. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of pretend like another Muppet hand is taking place. Okay. Again, same thing. I'm going to be creating her arm like so trying my best to be as straight as possible with the shape of the arm. Cool, and I guess I can finish this. Oy, I went a little too sideways. And I can finish this area right here. Boom, cool, let's move around. Let's finish this area over here. And then for some reason, her hand is like all spread out. So what I'll do is I'll just try and like simplify it a little bit by doing this. Hopefully that doesn't look too weird, but we're gonna find out a little bit later. <laughs> Let's finish this part of the leg like so. Have you guys done these before, by the way? Please let me know down in the comments if you guys have, like if you own your own shop, do you do a lot of these custom like portraits? How have you found them to be like when you created them? Uh, when I first started, what we used to do is we would actually draw these on Procreate and then like manually digitize everything, which honestly took forever, like doing it with mouse and, um, and keyboard. It does take a lot longer, whereas if you just have a pen, I don't know, it's, it just seems a lot simpler now. I'm gonna give myself a super chiseled jaw because <laughs> why not? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, let's do it, something like that. And can I can have the ear? Yeah, okay, cool. Let's finish this area right here and let's do a little bit of the jaw. Hopefully it doesn't look weird. That's my, my biggest fear is that uh, I don't really mind myself looking really weird, but I know Amanda would mind a little more than I would, so something like that. Okay, perfect. And for my hair, something like that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's do hair hair. Let's go around here. One, two. I'm just trying to kind of like um, do the parts of it instead of like all in one. And let's do it like this. Again, this is like the simple like Pinterest couples portrait. Let's see what else we got. Oh, wow, I'm missing that part of the, the shirt. No problem at all. We'll just come up here and finish that shirt like so. Yeah, something like that. Cool. Again, one to one. Let me disable the photo. Let me enable 3D. Take a look at it. Looks pretty cool. Looks really nice. But you see like these little threads right here. The reason why these are happening is because I, I'm kind of like jumping all over the place. And this is how we're going to fix it, okay? We're going to select everything by clicking this button right here. And we're going to click this one at right here. But it's that what it's going to do is it's pretty much going to branch the whole design. So now it's like finding the best path for the design that you created. And it'll like stitch everything out all in one without jumping, without doing anything. And it's honestly really, really awesome. I'm going to disable 3D and I'm going to enable the view slow redraw so you guys can check that out. OK, so it should start creating all in one. See, it's connecting it all. It found the best path for it. It's going around. There you go. My super straight leg <laughs> that it that it's doing. Awesome. And now let's go into the some of the settings for this design because we do want to have some settings to it. Let's see right now. So the stitch width is one millimeter, which is actually really nice. The density is 0.4, which is perfect. That's kind of where we want it at. The corner type is sharp. You guys can see that even though this application is super, super simple, there's still a lot of settings for you to play with, which is awesome. And one of the ones that I want to go into is actually underlay because I want to be able to just add some sort of underlay so that it gives it more of like a solid stitch. And especially if you're using fabrics that are kind of like wavy and they're not so like uh, stretchy. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. These settings are generally up to you, depending on the kind of underlay that you want. Some of you might want like more of like that rich filled look, whereas others may not so much, depending on the kind of fabric that you're dealing with. So zigzag again is like a little zigzag going back and forth. Contour, you could say it's more of an edge run because it's doing two lines that are across the, the uh, stitch. And then parallel is more of like the center run. So I'm just going to do a parallel. I think a parallel should be fine enough. And then you obviously have commands and you have the transform, which we don't really need to mess around with. That's pretty good. Now, let's see. 3D to turn it on. I'm going to move it around here and I want to show you guys what it looks like beside the photo. Let me remove this and let me move the photo. You see guys, super, super simple, super easily. We were able to create a pretty awesome design in a couple of minutes. So like I said, if you guys have your own Etsy shop or your own online shop, or you just want to gift these like kind of designs to people, this is a super simple way. You don't have to be stressed out about knowing a bunch of digitizing, whereas here you have the satin tool and you have the auto branching and super simple. You got your pen easy to go. Now, the last thing that we're going to do for this design, I'm going to hide it, remove the 3D and just bring it back into the hoop somewhere around here as we're going to save it. Remember, you always want to save your designs anytime you're done or you make some major changes. And to save it, you're simply going to click this up here, save. So I'm going to save it as can and Amanda. We're going to press return. Okay. Or yeah. Okay. And now it's saved. Now you can actually exit your doodler and I'm going to show you how you can export it. To export it, you simply go to files on your iPad and on your iPad, you click on my iPad and you'll find a folder that says design doodler. This is where you will find all of the designs that you've created. So here's Ken and Amanda and I'm simply going to click and hold to share it to my email. Here's where it gives you all of the options and I'm just going to click Gmail. Now you can open it on your computer, export it as the file that you guys need. So if you have a brother machine, you would export it as a PES, but for me, it's going to be DST. And now I'm going to show you what this design looks like embroidered. Let's go. And this is what the end result of the design looks like. Oh man, it looks pretty awesome. Check it out. This is a side by side of the digitizing on the doodler and the actual embroidery. I'm pretty happy with it. Back looks pretty awesome, super clean. 
And overall, really, really nice, super simple way to create your own portrait designs. Guys, if you end up creating your own designs, tag us on Instagram, on Facebook, even on YouTube. We'd love to check it out and see what you guys create. We hope you enjoyed learning from this tutorial and see how simple it is to digitize with a design doodler. I'll leave the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching, Legacy Family. And in the meantime, check out this tutorial next. See you on the next one. Bye-bye, guys.